All right, so our video today is gonna to be for the femur and the patella. So what we're gonna start is our first in a sideline position. And I'm gonna be looking for one of the more proximal landmarks that we can find, which is known as the greater trochanter. Uh, it's really easy to feel for this bone if you're looking for the tallest part while they're in sideline, that's usually the greater trochanter. But I'm gonna use his lower extremity as a lever. So I'm gonna place my palm over it and I'm gonna internally, externally rotate his thigh and you should be able to feel it. Please make sure that you can find all three sides of it as a three-dimensional object. So I have the anterior part, the posterior part, and the superior part because we will We'll need to use all three of those for later on muscle attachments. So once I've been able to identify that, let's say the superior part, he can abduct his thigh good and that'll be an insertion of gluteus medius onto that surface. Can you turn into prone for me please? From a prone position I'm going to find that landmark again. I'm going to go again to that widest part of the hip. I'm going to feel around for the soft tissue. Once I believe I've found it, I'm going to internally and externally rotate the AF joint. You can see my fingers moving. When I find that posterior aspect of the greater trochanter, I would like to move down. Now, in theory, we're moving down on what we hope to call the lateral lip of the linea aspera, but the major portion of that is actually the, what is called the gluteal tuberosity. Now you won't be able to feel the roughened gluteal tuberosity, but we are going to be feeling for gluteus maximus inserting into that location. So greater trochanter, as we move down, I'm going to ask him to lift his whole leg up off the table, and I'm getting pushed out by gluteus maximus as he does that. Let's do that one more time. Excellent. Also in this location, very close to that similar landmark, I'm going to move slightly more medial and superior to that. This is going to be where quadratus femoris inserts in what is called the quadrate tubercle. So I'm going to ask him to do external rotation and I will feel a little bit of a lift. So he's bringing his leg across his body like so while I'm sinking into this location. We'll talk about quadratus in a different video. Running down the back of the leg is the landmark known as the linea aspera. We're not going to be able to palpate this, you just need to have a general idea of where it sits because of all of the muscle attachments to it. I'm going to have my body turn over into supine. Again, if we go back, I can utilize my hand on his femur and rotate it in and out to again get a sense of where our greater trochanter is. Towards the front of that, we're going to be looking for where the lesser trochanter is. So I'm going to be utilizing landmarks previously discussed, like this femoral triangle with the inguinal ligament and then a muscle called sartorius. I'm going to put him into a figure four position, start at his ASIS, move down along the inguinal ligament, which is running towards the pubic tubercle, drop just inferior, ASIS is here, inguinal ligament, I'm into that femoral triangle, and I'm going to go back and forth and see if I can feel a fairly taut tendon. This is the combination tendon of iliacus and psoas, so iliopsoas, and its insertion is down into the lesser trochanter. I'm going to increase the amount of medial rotation, if possible, and see if I can feel any bony motion. And I'm also going to ask him to activate this muscle by doing AF flexion. And right there I'm feeling a tendon lift up. So deep underneath your hands is going to be the, the lesser trochanter. It is a posterior medial landmark, that's why I'm bringing him into such a lot of internal rotation to try to rotate that landmark more anterior. The femur runs down the front of the leg. We'll talk about hip quadricep and all of its landmarks coming up, but we're going to look at a few of the distal landmarks next. For this, I need to determine where does the femur start and where does the tibia begin. So I'm going to bend his knee up. With a view facing in this direction, I'm going to try to determine is where does the femur end where the tibia begins. One way to do this is to grab the tibia and take advantage of the small amount of knee rotation that occurs. If you can, hopefully you can see that from this video, that you can see the tibia is rotating right here on the femur. This giving me the joint line across here. I'm going to bring his leg back down keeping my fingers on that joint line. 
since we know that this is the joint line, on the medial side above that is the medial condyle, and on the lateral side above that will be the lateral condyle of the femur. The most medial location on that condyle is known as the epicondyle, and similarly the most lateral location on the lateral condyle is known as the lateral epicondyle of the femur. The last landmark I'm going to look for on the femur, I'm going to utilize this medial epicondyle, and as I start palpating superior or proximal to that, you will notice that I'm able to sink in further and further as I'm going up along what's known as the supercondylar ridge. On that supercondylar ridge, there is a bony landmark that we need to find, which is known as the adductor tubercle. This is the final insertion of adductor magnus, so once you've identified this bony landmark, you ask the person to bring their knees together and you will be able to feel the adductor magnus tendon sticking up. I could also ask my patient to turn into a sideline position. Palpating on the bottom leg, again, look for the knee joint, make sure you're on the femur. The most medial part is its epicondyle. As I roll proximal to that and I'm able to sink in a little bit more, you should be able to cross fiber the adductor magnus muscle inserting into that location. If they lift their knee up again, again I'll be able to feel that same location, the adductor tubercle. If my body turns back into supine, we will finish with the patella. The patella is a floating bone here, sesamoid, and again across its top is known as its base, and the more inferior part of it as it comes towards a point is known as its apex. Primarily, this bone is sitting directly over top of the femur through its articulation. It should have some mobility to it, however, the knee must be in a completely relaxed position. If there's any bend or any contraction of the quadriceps, you will not be able to move it. On one side, we have the medial border, and obviously on the other side, we then have the lateral border. Get a sense of trying to move this around for some of the leg conditions you will learn about in the future.